I just wanted to mention. I just finished watching uh, White Lines on Netflix. Terrific series. Um, probably not, it's not gonna win you know an Emmy or anything or Golden Globe or whatever prizes they give a TV show. It's not gonna do that. Don't get me wrong. But if you don't mind, what if you don't mind watching a ten episode series that probably should have been eight episodes about you know about this uh, up and coming DJ who basically goes to find himself in Ibiza and his sister then goes to try and trace his last steps because it, then there's a report that he went missing and then they find out that he was that died basically. But you know that for your trailer. I'm not spoiling anything, so don't worry. But it's a basically a bit of a murder mystery who done it sort of TV series under the prism of these uh, young people that go to Ibiza to go and find, you know, sex, love and fame, whatever it may be. And it's a thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable TV series. Um, I think mostly it's, it kind of has that, it's probably um, been affected or benefited from the COVID-19 glitter, right? The little sprinkling of COVID-19 because we're all at home. We've all been devoid of enjoying our kind of uh, quote unquote everyday lives, right? Um, if you are somebody that likes to go out and party, you're going to get a lot of um, good feelings from this. You're going to be smiling from ear to ear during certain moments, during certain speeches. Um, it, you're going to identify a lot with some of the characters in it because, you you know, you know mates in your group that are like that, people that you went, you met when you've been outside. So part of the reason why I liked it is because, you know, I'm locked indoors and I haven't been to a rave since, you know, I went to Bergheim in March or something. I don't know. March. Was it March or February? I don't know. So you know, it's been a while. So a lot of the a lot of my impressions of it are going to be tinged in that regard, right? But I wrote some actual notes of what I just wanted to say. But the, the, the yeah, so the the main girl in it's a bit annoying, Zoe. She kind of has this. She's I think she suffers from bipolar disorder, or she went through an emotional breakdown, or she had an emotional you know break when she discovered that her brother went missing. Um, in the TV series, so that's a bit hard to deal with. I think sometimes in TV series, when they f when they have when somebody suffers from some sort of emotional disorder or has some kind of family f uh, family strain, they tend to really really lean into it aggressively. I found it that's why part of the reason why I stopped watching Homeland. The main girl in Homeland is bipolar. I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, and she just continually just has these manic moments in the middle of just really crucial parts of the story. I just throw everything off and don't really make any sense. And you know, people just keep indulging her, which is you know probably bad to say. But I just didn't like it. it didn't really sit right with me, so I had to kind of skip it in Homeland for that exact reason. But you know, what can you do? And then. Um, I thought the idea, because it kind of reminded me a little bit of Devs. If you watch his TV series called Devs, right? It's just pretty good. Um, it's I think it's, I don't know, I think it's out on Hulu. I'm not too sure what show it's on. But um, it kind of reminded me of Devs because there is a part in Devs that basically they say um, that humanity kind of is either following, you either believe in free will or the fact that we follow this predetermined path, right? So in, the, in this TV series, White Lions, the main character, Zoe, kind of has a bit of a has a bit of a decision to make no has a bit of an epiphany in, in terms of like why exactly she's still in Ibiza right because I think she literally goes out there to try and solve the murder um, of her brother or explanation for his disappearance um, and then you know by episode 6 she's still there wondering why she hasn't left yet and part of it could be that you know this was the moment that she this was the occasion that she needed to discover herself right and to kind of come off the tracks and sort of the predetermined tracks and sort of discover who she was really meant to be or was this where she was always meant to end up regardless anyway like fate just you know put her there under these circumstances but she was always meant to be there regardless and it's really interesting because a lot of that happens sometimes when you go out and you have a really good night especially when you the, f the earlier years of partying there are times when you're on a dance floor and you meet somebody really cool in the, in the toilets or in the smoking area. You end up chatting, you have this weird connection or you have a weird moment where you suddenly are invited behind a fucking booth with the DJs, right? Or you bump into somebody that you've kind of looked up to. There's these weird moments that just happen when you're out partying. It just you can't really explain whether it was kind of meant to be or not. Or, you know, there's been occasions where I've been in Bergheim and I've kind of bumped into somebody who I went to school with, right? Or somebody that knew me from football or something. Just these weird occasions. And it just seems to kind of all correspond at the same time. And you're not really sure if it's like something that was, you know, predetermined or 
if it was something that just happened as a consequence of fate, right? So she's kind of having to reconcile with that and figure out like what exactly is going on here, what is happening, and I think it's a good advertisement for Ibiza too, right? Because it does lend itself to this idea of Ibiza being this magical escape, right? This kind of like um, worst kept secret, right? Um, people can go there, and it's probably one of the only places I think I can think of, maybe outside of uh, Berlin in terms of club scene that isn't intrinsically tied to like adolescence and youth obviously a lot of the seminal kind of influential and sort of like uh really um important moments in your life will come when you're kind of in your formative years right when your frontal lobe hasn't really developed so much uh it will kind of form a lot of your personality or your kind of worldview i understand earlier on but i be for special in the regard that it doesn't seem like a place that kind of only caters to the young right you can kind of still go there and have a good time um in your older age right um it doesn't necessarily discriminate in that regard it maybe discriminates in other situations but for the most part ageism isn't really a thing there which is quite rare which is sorry, which is quite rare in clubland it's you know clubland you kind of get the feeling that they're always trying to cater for the young especially if you're promoting clubs you know that you're kind of always perpetually having to or perpetually oh, when you're promoting club nights you're having to perpetually keep yourself up to date and in tune with what the generation just behind you is doing and the generation just behind that just so you can keep your on yourself on your toes and if you don't the next person is just going to come and take over because they are in tune with what's going on so that i thought was a really good um uh, advertisement for Ibiza in that regard that you can just go there you know be a middle-aged mum with a with a kid and a husband at home and still get some kind of value from party not par not even partying that much but just being around people that are and kind of soaking up that vibe I think that was really cool to see but, but, but what's another note added on here um I thought oh I said yeah I would um I also mentioned because of the age thing I also thought it would be quite cool if there was a documentary about IB for that focus primarily on people that were still going at it now because I think that's part of the story that makes it really interesting this white lines is that everybody in the series of white lines is sort of broken right in their own regard especially the people that Zoe goes and meets out there right the former boyfriend the former girlfriend of her brother um the drug dealers out there the moms the dads the brothers the people involved in the crew they're all sort of like broken and they're all sort of like hanging on to like their glory years right of the past when they were kind of the, the guys or the girls in Ibiza but it seems like that's a common thing there right you always get these sort of like stories of these really wrinkled up bronze people older people that are just in Ibiza still kind of running the show still walking around like their shit don't stink with a dick hanging out the front right really giving it the big one and i would think that would be a pretty good documentary to kind of focus in on those people that have kind of never left the party they're perpetually because i always wondered like that's one of the things maybe it's a it's a again it's a it's a thing in my regard but i think that's maybe something that's always stuck out to me and that was maybe i forgot who the quote was by it might have been like something like a dame dash i think where he said something along the lines of like you know he never wanted to be the old guy in the club right he always wanted to have an exit plan a route out or something other than being in front of the camera or being a dancing man next to the rapper so that if he is in a club people can see him differently right you don't want to always try and be competing with the new hip kids out there especially imagine nowadays in hip-hop trying to compete with kids in the club now who are doing all those fucking crazy dances and have fucking colorful dreadlocks on and cool jordans like you're just not going to be able to really match them in any way shape or regard you'd rather come in there and be like the owner of the club right or the manager of the set of kids that might work but to actually be on a front line fist bumping and stuff or fi uh, fist pumping isn't going to work but i would really like to see a documentary on ib for focusing in on that old older group i think they'll be it'll be quite illuminating for people in one respect it'll make some people you know be feel a little bit sad for them right oh man that's pity them in one regard but also be a really sobering honest look at what exactly it means to devote yourself to a life of hedonism right of always being about the party like what does that actually look like because we don't actually know because sometimes you know we can start being in a rave we can start being in a party but then things change in it right you end up hooking up with somebody that probably isn't that well enamored with the club lifestyle you maybe move to another location something happens with your family things change in it so it's not necessarily you don't necessarily not everyone has a benefit of being able to operate within nightlife for the rest
success in their life it doesn't necessarily happen that way unless you're kind of one of the fortunate people who's able to kind of you know work your way into working with a hospitality group you maybe signed up and you worked with an agency you've got a booking uh, platform that you use you've got a record label you manage artists there's ways that you can get in it but not everyone is able to do it if you're a punter you just go to raves until you kind of get bored but what does it actually look like when you stay you never ever leave what's actually look like and, and are you the same person do you operate the same way are you still getting on it the same way do you still preach it the same way or do you kind of flip the way you kind of view your flip the way that you kind of experience it and you kind of conduct yourself in that environment um i'll probably think the latter right you probably couldn't go as hard as you did when you you obviously couldn't i'm assuming as hard as you did when you're 27 when you're 37 it's just not going to be the same thing you're gonna to have to dial some things back right or maybe not but that's why I'd love to see a documentary. I think that would be really, really cool to watch, man. Um, what else was on? Oh yeah, I liked seeing that. That was a good one. Um, I liked seeing the the what I, what I wrote here. I liked seeing the depiction of Ibiza's escapism, hedonism, and downright craziness. I think they did that really well. Maybe because of the characters involved, they all kind of represent different faces of Ibiza or different space, different faces of clubland like nightlife. Um, they were able to kind of show you that because I think that's probably my um one uh. Ben, one thing that I say is always a kind of a positive of a place like Berlin is that on most kind of great places that have good club scenes is that you can go there at it and in a city more, more so I mean right you can go there in that city and essentially you would have no you should have a great a great city with great clubs you should have no idea that that kind of see the environment exist unless you want to go there it shouldn't be in your face right it should just it should just exist right you should just be able to kind of if you want to go to berlin just have a good time going to galleries and popping into cool restaurants and record stores you can do that without never un never knowing about where these kind of cd under the bridge sort of like dark room clubs are and i think that's the beauty of a place like abifa where it looks like you can exp there's so many different parts of it right whether there's the kind of uh woo woo yoga sort of like spiritual side of it whether there's a kind of veganism side of it whether there's a party side of it whether there's a kind of agricultural side of it whether there's the family um you know family ties side of it obviously the food there's lot of different aspects of it that you can um, explore that will not necessarily lead you to clubland but that's a, like an added bonus onto it. And I think that's one of the beauties of it. Because, you know, people live there. People make, you know, careers there. They raise families there. They meet life partners there. So there's obviously a part of that island that is special in that regard. But I think they did a really good way of representing those kind of different facets of the three different phases, right? Escapism, hedonism, and just plain old craziness. 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 Craziness, I was going to say. Yeah. And then the other thing that I thought was interesting was I thought the club teams would look quite authentic for the most part they captured the vibe really well um i think with movies or with tv series my kind of thinking of club scenes is that they usually always a bit naff especially once you find out that you know when they film club scenes from what i've heard they usually film them with no actual volume in the club there's not actually nothing playing they film them silent and then they kind of dub the music over or they play it really really low like a you know like a music video right you'd see music but that's sometimes music videos they play they have a really loud beats by Dre Pill or something in the background whilst they kind of and they kind of sync up the, the the sort of like I guess the lips with the music later on in the editing but um that kind of spoils the kind of magic of it but I think they did a good job of depicting s even some of the earlier scenes where they're partying in their home country or in Manchester they picture it they they just they kind of um capture the whole warehouse sort of like warehouse rave back in that day vibe really well and then they also do the same thing with the kind of early 90s late 90s sort of like vibe in Ibiza too that I kind of read about and see in documentaries it sort of looked quite similar so I think they did pay quite a lot of attention to some of those archival footage archival images and videos whatever it may be real life accounts from people and really did a good job of making sure it looked as authentic as it can be because again like I said it's really difficult to do in a TV series at all um, and then I thought the, the, the chest they had a oh and the, yeah <laughs> I read here the chest they had about all, the chest they had all cooked up about their future plans, but instead, their life was way more bleak than what it was. Yeah, um, it was very close. It was very close to home and very autobiographical in that way, in the in the fact that you know part of the allure of nightlife or going out 
is the fact that you can escape your everyday life right you can momentarily temporarily put a pause whatever's happening in your nine to five in your monday to friday and kind of just let loose you can reinvent yourself especially if you're a club kid right you can get a completely different outfit on you can really manipulate your face differently with makeup um you can maybe have a completely different social group that you hang out with when you go clubbing it's just a completely different you right you can essentially just pl- press pause on real life and then press play on this kind of alternate reality um and then when you go in that space there's so much optimism people are such on especially for the most part people are, are on their good best behavior in terms of wanting to impress in terms of wanting to seem cool in terms of wanting to connect that you know you can sometimes be caught in these conversations when you've maybe had a bit too much to drink where you're sort of like planning your future with strangers and you have this optimistic sort of like you know euphoric a utopian vibe of what could happen to your future the possibilities are endless but then sometimes when you leave or when you kind of look in the cold heart day of truth especially the morning after you sort of realize just how ordinary and bleak your actual life is and that is usually the kind of i think in the beginning when i did when i always go clubbing that used to kind of thing used to bum me out a lot but then part of the thing that used to really but what really saved me what kind of um, allowed me to kind of put that thinking to the side oddly enough was when I started getting involved in the startup industry, right? When I first read like the four hour work week and I started to read about some of these other founders of companies, right? Mark Zuckerberg of uh, Facebook, Jack Dorsey of Twitter, you know, Jeff Bezos of Amazon. You start to read their accounts and where they come from, their backgrounds, all these other, you know, Silicon Valley, Y Combinator. You start to find out all these amazing people that are actually changing the fabric of life as we know it, right? And you start to realize, oh, they're just like me and you, right? They're just regular, average, everyday people like you and I, but they've decided to commit, you know, ungodly amount of hours and hard work into making this particular product, service, or app work. And that kind of allowed me to think, okay, even though these conversations, these nightclubs can be a bit mindless, they can be a bit nonsensical, you can have sometimes think you are, you know, way better than what you actually are. I think that little bit of hope that you get during the nightlife is really important to kind of hold you down throughout the week it's really important to have that uh, option to let loose and to kind of you know uh, put aside your worries just for a couple of hours just for a few hours a night or for the weekend it's really really important just even even especially now during COVID-19 lockdown what I've realized that just even having the thought of it being a, an option in your head is better than not having the option in your head at all it does a lot to your mental psyche I want to say it does because that's that's probably explains a lot why the kind of working class uh um kind of crew that populate those sort of like tech house nights are so uh loyal and they're so fucking you know on it and ready to go for these parties because they really do treat those raves those festivals those club nights as their one moment as their couple of occasions a year or whatever it may be to actually let loose and enjoy so i think a lot of people that are a bit cynical and you know maybe take the music too seriously or maybe have the luxury of working in a career that allows them to sort of work and be on a laptop you don't necessarily see that but i think a lot of that uh, thinking about it watching that beef it does explain a lot of the you know the appeal of those kind of like you know uh i don't know patrick topings or those kind of michael Bibby sort of people right who have this really committed hardcore group of fans especially and i would say mostly working class people who love their tech house and really really get on it once they get out there and that party in that space because they don't necessarily take it for granted right these moments to them are very precious and i'm sure some of these people have met you know some of their closest friends or you know formed some great relationship with people when they're out in these places so um i think that was a really really good thing that they did in the series man i really really enjoyed it as you can tell me rabbing on about this um what else did i say on the list here um and of course it makes me miss clubland of course i think any kind of series like this i've kind of trying to you know subconsciously avoid because i don't want to get a bit of fomo for a tv screen which is a bit sad or for a laptop screen which is even sadder but yeah it does make me miss clubland it does make me miss you know just the mindless conversations that you have the energy the vibe the sound the smell going in at somewhere at the pitch dark right queuing up outside of a warehouse space somewhere and it's pitch dark and you're walking out and the lights are shining in your face you get in the public you know get in public transport and having regular um everyday people looking at you like you're a decrepit degenerate because you look like you've been in yesterday's clothes and it's 10 a.m in the morning all that stuff i absolutely miss 
miss miss miss but i recommend you check it out it's a really good tv series white lines now on netflix if i have to give it a rating i'd say maybe like a six or maybe high low seven out of ten decent enough watch if you wanted to watch um like i said with most of these sort of tv series on netflix they probably could have got away with having it be eight episodes probably didn't need to be ten but if you're into it and you like a bit of you know um party lifestyle tv series definitely check it out man very very fun um definitely uh, a, a good watch for the stuff that's on netflix now at the moment